welcome back to my Light Whip tutorial series. And on this week's tutorial, we are going to go over a concept that I was asked to cover, which are isolations. So, with isolations, you need to understand the difference between a isolation and then just a regular circle. So the thing that makes isolations different from just regular circles is where the middle of the circle is. So with a isolation, you are going to take the middle of where you are gripping your whip, and that is going to be the point that is the middle of your circle. So that is going to be what you are isolating, is the middle point. Versus if you're just to spin your whip in a clockwise motion, the point that is the middle of your circle is where you are gripping your fiber. So when you are doing an isolation, you need to grip the whip wherever you feel most comfortable and then isolate from the base or the bottom of the handle to where your grip is, this middle point here, this is going to be where I'm isolating. So the easiest way to get into isolations is to first learn how to do them in the vertical. So in order to get to this, you need to become extremely comfortable with the weight of the whip and with rotating it in a way that properly counterweights the handle. Because obviously the handle is going to be heavier, but the handle is also what's going to make it really easy for your whip to continue spinning in the same direction because the handle gives it better momentum. So the best way to learn this is to just imagine that you're stirring a big pot of soup. I imagine a cauldron because that's way more fun. But you're going to use the handle to help keep that momentum. So when you are stirring this pot, this imaginary pot, you're going to notice that this is still going to be my isolation point. Then eventually when you become accustomed to isolating this way, then you can bring it up. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that when your handle is up here, your hand's gonna be here. When your handle's here, your hand's gonna be there. You're always gonna be stirring in that motion and isolating in the middle. And the reason that you need to first learn how to do that before you can do this is because if you don't properly understand how to counterbalance your handle, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to do body isolations. So, so the easiest type of isolation to learn is a isolation at your legs. And just remember that since you are isolating the middle point, when you bring it into your legs, it will be able to go through because you're not putting the entire length of the whip through your legs. If I were to do that, then it would just end up wrapping or hitting my other leg. But since we're isolating, Since we're isolating, it makes it so that the whip is able to isolate around your legs with no problem. And what you could do to continue this isolation is you can grab the whip as it the handle comes out on the other side. So what you're doing is you're isolating for half and then instead of letting it wrap all the way, you're gonna grab it before it wraps around the leg. And then you could even bring it 
into another isolation. So the trick with isolations is always grabbing the whip at the right moment. So even for example here, you wanna grab it with your other hand so that you could keep it spinning, you could keep whipping, you could keep doing your tricks, and it doesn't look like a dead stop in your flow because you always want your flow to be continuous and you always want it to transition well. So when you're doing your torso isolations, you're going to be switching hands, you're going to be giving some slack to your whip so that it could actually wrap around your entire body. But you also need to keep in mind, if you give some slack to your whip, that means your isolation point has now changed. So if I go from here, in my middle's here, to here, my isolation point is no longer there. So I'm going to have to adjust the whip accordingly so that the isolation point is in the right spot. So for body isolations, you could go from your right, so grip the handle in your right, and what you're going to do, you're just gonna fling it around. That's the first step, flinging it. And what you're going to notice is that when you fling it, it keeps going. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your left, and as it goes, you're gonna move your left with you. So what your left hand is going to end up doing So it goes from in front of my face to behind to back in front of my face. Now, if you look at my right, all my right is doing is just letting go of the whip until I'm ready to grab it again at the bottom. You could also do it on the other side. Now, you can go backwards with your left, but then you can also go forwards. So in order to go forwards, So once you have learned how to do your isolations on both sides, that's when you can learn how to transition out of it. So Dana Holler has a really good tutorial on body isolations, and she goes over transitions and different variations of body isolations. So I do recommend you check that video out if you haven't already, since this is just really a basic tutorial for isolation and her tutorial goes into more depth. So that is all for this week's tutorial. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If there's a specific move or tutorial that you want to see, let me know in the comments below. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!